Joining Melissa are the president and CEO of AMC Networks, Josh Sapan. And the creator, writer, director, and executive producer of AMC's Mad Men, Matthew Weiner. Shake it again. Yeah. <laughs> Shake it out. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. So, Matthew, I know in a couple weeks you're getting ready to write and direct the final episode of Mad Men. Yes. Um, but really, the burning question I have for you this morning is what was your favorite long term job with broadcasting and cable? <laughs> I had a one day job uh, at the. Uh, um, calling subscribers to Broadcasting and Cable, trying to get them to come to the HRTS luncheon. Made $100, closed a lot, closed a lot. <laughs> I was the leader for the day. <laughs> well, you need a job, thank you, you need for a that job. contribution. My, and my, my advice was, be nice to everyone. You have no idea who is sitting in your office. <laughs> um, thank you for that contribution to BNC. Sure. Um, but seriously, um, this is a big moment, you know. This is a, a, a landmark show. Um, you've been working on it for years. It's your your baby. Um, how are you feeling right now as as you wrap this up? Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of feelings. You know, I'm there. There are waves of feelings, and I'm not really at the real feeling yet of what it's going to be like, uh, which I know will be loss. Um, there is. Uh, the, the thing I'm focusing on is savoring what's left and the idea of completing something. I mean, it's just not really part of, of my job normally. Series television in itself is not something that works itself to completion all the time. And, and your job is to keep the story going every week. You know, we always have a completion to the season, but the idea that we're getting to the end of this, I feel good about that. Emotionally, it's, you know, it's very confusing. I'm looking forward to, to seeing my family again. But other than that, um, other than that, it, I, I, it's trying to integrate all of that together, these two families, and take on the idea that I wrote the pilot 14 years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a before I, uh, you know, and it was four and a half years, five years before I even met, you know, AMC, and seven years after I wrote it, I was on the air. So it's, 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 a, I think I'm not good at math, but it's close to a third of my life. What has it meant to your life and your career? Uh, it's, I've tried to put most of that in the show. I really have. It's been absolutely life-altering in every way, completely satisfying artistically, um, emotionally um, deep for me. And I've met some of the most amazing people I'll ever meet. I've gotten to meet a lot of my heroes because of the work. It's changed every aspect of my life. I'm a different person. I just didn't even know I could write this much, you know? I'm a fundamentally very lazy person. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know, having a gun pointed at your head for seven years, you actually get used to it. <laughs> having a train come at you, you'd be surprised. You're much braver than you think you are. <laughs> Is that the biggest thing you would say is the takeaway? It's just knowing what you can do, what you're capable of, <clears throat> creatively, uh, professionally? Yes, and I would include in that as the most important thing, knowing that I could work with so many people um, and knowing how to be a manager on some level and how to harness other people's genius. Mm -hmm. I know it all gets reflected on me, but like I had no idea that I could figure that out, that I could find Scott Hornbacher, you know, and that we could bring in, uh, start all these careers. I'm not talking about the actors even. I'm just talking about like the, the people I deal with every day and, you know, network, studio, all these other sort of things that I don't really seem to have the temperament for on some level. I'm very proud that I, that, uh, I learned how to do that, that I grew up in that way, you know. It's the people who have my job don't, don't always rise to that part of it and they kind of get rid of it, but I'm, I'm surrounded by incredible people. It absolutely, uh, everything that you see on the show is generated and executed by a group of people. It's confusing, 
I don't know if it's commercially acceptable to say that, but it is really how it works, and it's it's uh, that that's that's been amazing. It's been amazing, and and I've got to grow up as Don's grown up, you know, and all the characters. So yeah. that's that's I get to express all of those things. Well, part part of growing up is making mistakes and learning from them. Do you have a favorite one from the course of this experience? Mistakes. There's something, yeah, d that you, you want did something that... from today, or do you want sure? Something from... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make mistakes constantly. I mean, that's, things go on the air with, this is the whole point of view. When you work with perfectionists, they, you know, 99% means yeah. that, 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 what, what do we mess up? And that's really, the, the goal is to not focus on that. There are mistakes made constantly. And we try and make the best of them. And often they're really lucky. Um, I mean, it's always, it's, it's usually something, honestly, the mistakes that, that I personally make are usually, uh, I'll, I'll chalk off to uh, um, fatigue, sleep deprivation. They're always emotional and they're always interpersonal. Those are the mistakes that I make. It's like, you know, I, I, uh, it's like Roger Sterling, I am apologizing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I come in and, you know, I was like, I would like to start one day without coming in and apologizing for my behavior last night. <laughs> Do you identify with him the most? What? You identify I, I, I don't identify, but I, there's a little bit of that in me. I can't drink. That's really, I probably wouldn't be so cantankerous. <laughs> Josh? Yeah. This has been a, obviously a huge show for AMC and for the industry, the, the landscape. What's been the impact? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's been big impact, I think. I think uh, Matt obviously worked on The Sopranos and, and, and Mad Men, and <clears throat> there's much talk about uh, the golden age of television, and if uh, Dickens were alive today, he'd be a showrunner, and, <laughs> and uh, so Matt probably uh, embodies that, which is probably the most interesting subject of the moment because it's had such a profound effect on what's on television. And so I, I think... Uh, just to connect it to a broader framework, I think it really has had a significant hand, and Matt has, in inviting just much better TV, and TV that is treated as um, a different form of, of uh, communication. You know, it's not TV what TV meant before which was a slightly derogatory term. So I think it's actually had a pretty significant effect. TV. Yeah, TV yeah. was bad. <laughs> My parents said, don't, don't watch it, you'll right. get dumb. Yeah. And, uh, and I, so I think this show and Matt have had a very significant impact on all that. Well, you mentioned the golden age of TV. I think <clears throat> I hear that phrase every day now, you know, the last year or so. And there are more original programming hours and episodes on than ever in the history. And arguably, more great TV on today, um, and yet the drivers for that, that you know, we look at you know, the, the branding for distribution, advertising, and, and, and uh, just overall branding for, for viewers, that's been around, those are needs that have been around for years and years and years, so why do you think we're having this moment now, more better television than ever? Uh. You have, I, I have my. I have a theory it. too. Go ahead, you I want to hear yeah. no. you go first. Mine is mine is yeah, I, I'm mine is completely from the sidelines, you know. As yeah. a as a, I mean, the golden age of TV is a little bit to me like you know, the creative revolution, uh, in advertising. It is a term that is being coined by the TV business. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, um, but I feel like um, what really happened is is that it was lower cost for talent in special deals made for, by the WGA and DGA and so forth and SAG to encourage this part of the business. And I think it exploded into a cost structure that allowed people to bite their way into, uh, 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 you know, HBO doesn't have advertising, but I always felt like it was a, um, an, an economic opportunity to brand your network, to make a splash, to attract advertisers, um, sometimes eventually at network rates, you know, all 
in this very sort of like netherworld of basic cable, I think has been a big part of it. HBO has a different model, but HBO showed everyone that you could make billions of dollars off of less than a, you know, uh, off of off a seven, you know, rating. Mm -hmm. So once that, like independent film, once people were sort of like, well, we don't have to appeal to the this mass audience. We don't have the pressures of network. It's not going to cost as much to make it. Can we attract it? And creative people saw this as like this incredible opportunity. I mean, it, 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 I don't know how and clear cable it, you're speaking, but, and but cable in we, particular. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I mean, and then competition becomes like, how do you get the eyeballs? What is it that people are responding to, to quality, noise, difference, all these things that don't really work uh, in a network model uh, traditionally because it has to be so broad. And I was, I came to AMC because they told me that they were interested in what I wanted to do with the show. And I was like, I will work for less, I will work harder if you let me, if you trust my creative vision on this, and it's not like I had no supervision, I just wasn't whatever else it is, but I, and a lot of people like me were like, this is what we always wanted. This is what we always wanted, you can't, so the ironic thing is, is it's a mass communication, but it became very specific. And, and I think that that was an opportunity for, you know, the first year damages, you know, there's a lot of, now everybody's in this business and, and just I- Just critical mass, you think? Critical mass, I think it was just a things. critical mass of it. And also the movie business changed, which drove a lot of people towards it, but that's, that's happened since. In terms of the prestige, it's The Sopranos. That's the, old, that's the bottom of the entire thing. The Sopranos is an anti-network TV show. It was about everything. There's no lying about human behavior. It's <clears throat> subtle. It has action. It has um, unfortunate characters, unlikable characters. There's not one thing that would get past a focus group on that show. And it was a multi-billion dollar industry, forgetting about the critical success that, that, that HBO is still raping. It's a 40-year business. So that's my amateur opinion. And you, of course, worked on that show. I mean, did that... I think your it's. View of what I you think it's do. why AMC was interested in working with me. I mean, they, they it definitely, it was the the, the word Sopranos was bigger on our first poster than anything else, than almost than Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do want to get Josh to your answer about why yeah. we're having this moment, but that's why I went first, because he, he's gonna, he he really he knows the real answer. <laughs> but speaking to the, this point of why you went to AMC and you know what you could do with this show. Tell me a little bit about your relationship and how it's evolved with, with AMC. Of course, there have been tough negotiations. Yeah, there's, there's the ups and downs. I mean, you know, we, we, you know, we basically got to a point where, you know, I'm an individual and it's a corporation and it's sort of like unmatched in some way. It's like being a baseball player. Yeah. It's like it's hard, it's hard to win that uh, in the press. But the reality of, the, of our relationship is it's kind of been amazing. and to show that weird, that specific, no genre, no stars. Um, this is a risk-taking environment. That was the most spectacular thing that I felt when I got there. It's like, these people are nuts. <laughs> and, they are, they are, and these two shows, Breaking Bad and Mad Men, you can say whatever you want. They have nothing to do with each other. They are not a brand. They don't mean anything. Why are they doing this? Oh, because they're both good. Well, that's an interesting strategy. <laughs> and I didn't, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it was, there was an attitude of like, we've expanded as far as we can go into selling cable. Like, what, what product can we offer to excite people? What is our unique vision? Can we be HBO with commercials in it? Without nudity? Be TV 14? There's a lot of restrictions. But this is not FX. You know what I mean? I know it's hard to see, but we can't, I can't draw people in with, with boobs. I can't. So, um... You think FX draws people in with boobs? No, I think, well, look, I like entertainment also. I watch a lot of TV. I know that the value of, of, um, of titillation and violence and things like that, and I, can't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, the language, all those other things, they're very exciting. Especially on your television screen, when you're comparing it to network TV, it's ha its shock value may be wearing off, but there's a time where it's just like, where do I go for the sort of most, you know, visceral uh, entertainment experience of watching a bonfire or whatever? I'm not being critical. It, I, I watch it too. It's just like, this was, you know, hard to imagine. But Breaking Bad is genteel. 
in, in its restrictions. And someone like Vince who can you know, turn tension out of someone opening a drawer that can last for 20 minutes, uh, you know, that, that, that was the unique puzzle to solve. But they were so um, unconnected to the rules. Josh, you know, I know that you work at Showtime and so forth, but they, 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 Christina Wayne, Vlad, uh, Josh, Rob Sorcher, especially, that, those, that's where, who I really dealt with for, during the first two years of the show. And Charlie came in, obviously, very early. Just no conversation about this is how it's done. And as soon as that happens, you're like, you know, that, that's, everybody's in it together, you know? So, so what's next? Are you going to do your next thing with? Let him answer. I, got, I, got nothing, <laughs> I have nothing, no answer for that. You guys right don't now. have like a first look or anything like that, right? No, we never no, started no. that relationship like yeah. that way. This is, they know I do but one if thing you, at a but time. But if the next, do you have a next thing in your mind? Uh, I have a movie coming out August 22nd that I made during the show uh, with Owen Wilson, Zach Galifianakis, and Amy Poehler called uh, You Are Here. And that will be like in between the seasons. And I've written a play, and I'm probably going to uh, take, a, take a nice sigh and see what's on my mind. We were just talking about this. I need a sabbatical or something. It's been very time consuming. Yeah. But, sorry. No, no, no. No, it's just a pleasure to talk to a person who's writing TV shows, who's writing Delmore Schwartz uh, <laughs> and Allen Ginsberg into his TV shows, uh, and not everyone is aware of them. So I was just listening to Matt with a little rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Josh, what's your, what, what do you think of Matthew's answer about why we're at this point? Yeah, I guess I have a little bit of a different one. I, yeah. you know, I think it's probably a different, just a different perspective that I come from. Um, I think that uh, <clears throat> I think we actually, and I actually do believe that that when you write stuff, and Matt re redeemed us, when you write something because you're interested in it, and you don't write it for the market, you probably write differently, and you write something that is different, and it is not from the intention of I'm going to bring it to market. In a business environment, that sounds like a bad thing, but it's really a good thing. And it's a unique thing, and it hasn't been too much done on television. So I think Mad Men was that. It was a, to say it, it sounds like a trite word, a singular vision. And so there's just resonance in that. And then I think there's a lot of stuff behind that to get very pragmatic, including, I think, technology actually had something to do with the uplift, meaning yeah. it's a show you need to pay more attention to. So if you can't ever watch it on a DVR <clears throat> or on any manner of on demand, and it's only on, on a linear basis on Sunday at 9 or 10 and you're busy, it may, it may pass you by. Right. And so I think that actually all these changes in technology, which are part of the cable business, actually facilitated people paying more attention and having a little bit more focus the way they do in a darkened movie theater. And when they're a little bit more focused, they have more appreciation for subtle stuff happening that takes longer to reveal characters who are more surprising and ambiguous as opposed to predictable. So I think that all this technology actually is behind in some way giving a little facilitation to a different creative expression. Better. Yeah. I think it's actually they really marry. They marry and it is what is behind that stuff and why TV is so much better. Well, I appreciate it. He, he, he gave the, co the content answer and I gave the, the money answer. That's, Isn't that funny? This is, what, this is what our relationship is about. <laughs> it really is. It's fascinating to me. He, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, that's it's fascinating. Well, on that note, um, <laughs> since you covered each other's faces, <laughs> right, right. Um, just want to thank you so I'll much. I'll just take some of his talent, if you don't mind, because yeah, I think it may endure too, a little right? better than just uh, business activity. I think you got some of your own. <laughs> surprised. All right. Well, thank you both so very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.